Hi, it's Ms. Vital. This podcast is the first of a series of podcasts on plants. It was meant for my AP Biology class in Summit High School. 90% of the time life has existed on Earth, all organisms were microscopic. Complex organisms did not evolve on land until about 500 million years ago. Over 280,000 species of plants exist today. Most are terrestrial. There are four groups of land plants. Bryophytes include mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. They are non-vascular, and there's about 18,600 known species. Pteridophytes are seedless vascular plants that include ferns, whisk ferns, and horsetails. There's about 13,000 known species. Gymnosperms are considered naked seeds, and they are vascular plants. Most of them are cone bearers, like pines and firs. There are about 721 known species. Angiosperms, which are the type of plant you're most familiar with and the most abundant, have seeds that are inside ovaries, which acts as a protective chamber. They are flowering plants, and there are over 250,000 known species. Vascular tissue is when cells join into tubes that transport water and nutrients throughout the plant. You may be familiar with the xylem and the phloem, and we'll talk more about those later. The seed is the plant embryo, including a protective coat and a food supply. The seed is actually very similar to an egg because it contains an embryo, a food supply, and a protective coat. Plants are classified as being multicellular, eukaryotic, photosynthetic, autotrophs. They have cell walls made of cellulose, and they contain chlorophyll A and B in their chloroplasts. Other organisms share these characteristics, but two structures are only shared between land plants and Carophyceans. Carophyceans were the green algae most closely related to land plants. The two homologous structures are rosette cellulose synthesizing complexes and peroxisomes. Rosette cellulose synthesizing complexes are found in the cell membrane and they have rose-shaped arrays of proteins that produce cellulose microfibrils of the cell wall. Other types of photosynthetic organisms have linear arrays of proteins that produce cellulose. Peroxisomes are a microbody that contains enzymes that transfer hydrogen from various substrates to oxygen, producing and then degrading hydrogen peroxide. Peroxisomes are closely associated with chloroplasts. Carophyceans and land plants have the same enzymes in their peroxisomes, which makes them homologous structures. There are other characteristics of land plants. The first is apical meristems, which are localized regions of cell division at the tips of the shoots and roots. The apical meristems elongate and branch to obtain light, CO2, water, and nutrients. Meristematic tissue differentiates into different plant tissues. Plants, for the most part, only have meristematic tissue in certain areas, not all throughout the plant. As the cells in meristematic tissue differentiate and divide, they get pushed out of the area and become specialized. If you remember looking at cell division on in onion root tips, that was the meristematic tissue you were looking at. A second characteristic of land plants is that they have placental transfer cells. Plant cells that enhance the transfer of nutrients from parent to embryo are considered placental transfer cells. This is like a mammal mother giving nutrients to the fetus via the placenta. Embryophates is a term used for land plants, recognizing that land plants share the common derived trait of multicellular dependent embryos. Alternation of generations is a life cycle in which there is both a multicellular diploid form, which is called the sporophyte, and that produces spores, and a multicellular haploid form, which is the gametophyte, that produces gametes. Alternation of generations is not present in Carophyceans, the ancestors of land plants. Sporopollenin is a secondary product. It's a polymer synthesized by a side branch of a major metabolic pathway of plants. It is resistant to almost all kinds of environmental damage. It is especially important in the evolutionary movement of plants onto land. Sporopollenin is the most durable organic material known. 
It is in the cell walls of spores and it is produced by all four groups of plants. Sporangia is a multicellular capsule in which meiosis occurs and haploid spores develop. The multicellular gametangia is where gametes are produced in bryophytes, pteridophytes, and gymnosperms, not in flowering plants. The female is called the archangonia, and the males is the antheridia. Some other adaptations of land plants include the cuticle, which is a waxy coating on the epidermis of leaves and other plant parts. It is made of polyesters and waxes, it protects the plants from microbes, and it waterproofs the plant, preventing excess water loss. The stomata are pores in the epidermis of leaves, where the exchange of CO2 and oxygen between the inside and the outside of plants occur. This is for the process of photosynthesis. It is also where water exits the leaves by evaporation, a process called transpiration. As I said before, there are two types of vascular tissues, the xylem and the phloem. The xylem are tube-shaped cells that carry water and minerals up from the roots. The cells of the xylem are dead. The phloem is made of living cells, and these are nutrient-conducting cells that distribute nutrients and other organic products throughout the plant. Carophyceans and land plants have many homologous structures, which is evidence that land plants evolved from carophyceian algae about 500 million years ago. The homologous chloroplasts, the homologous cellulose walls, and the homologous peroxisomes are examples. Molecular, molecular systematic, which has compared the chloroplast DNA, nuclear genes for rRNA, and cytoskeletal proteins, have provided evidence that carophyceans are the algae most closely related to land plants. Keep in mind, carophyceans are not the, the present modern carophyceans are not the ancestors of plants. The first group of plants are the bryophytes. These are non-vascular seedless plants. Bryophytes include mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. The phylum brophyta contains the mosses, the phylum heptophyta contains the liverworts, and the phylum anthroceraphyta contain the hornworts. These were the earliest plants that evolved before vascular plants. The gametophytes are the dominant phase, which is true of only bryophytes, not the other three groups of plants. Bryophytes have rhizoids. They're used to anchor to the ground. They are long tubular single cells or filaments, and they don't absorb like roots do. Peat is undecayed organic matter formed from sphagnum moss, which is peat moss. It grows in wetlands called peat bogs or peat land. It does not decay readily. The world's peat lands store 400 billion tons of organic carbon. This plays an important role in stabilizing CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. Sphagnum moss used to be used by Aboriginal people for diapers and also was used during wartime as an antiseptic packing material for wounds because it's very absorbent and it doesn't decay. The other three groups of plants are considered vascular. The pteridophytes, the gymnosperms, and the angiosperms, which are the flowering plants. And again, vascular tissue is the xylem and the phloem. The vascular plants have a dominant sporophyte generation and branched sporophytes. The vascular plants probably evolved from moss-like ancestors over 400 million years ago. When it says that they have a dominant sporophyte generation. Basically what that means is when you're looking at a plant, you're looking at the sporophyte, which is made of haploid cells. In the case of bryophytes, when you're looking at moss, you're looking at the gametophyte, which is made of haploid cells. Pteridophytes are seedless vascular plants. There are two phyla, the lycophyta and the pterophyta. The lycophytes have small leaves with a single unbranched vein. Those small leaves are called microphylls. They evolved from tissue flaps on the surface of stems. Larger leaves in other plants are called megaphylls. Most ferns are homeosporous plants. That means that the sporophyte produces a single type of spore which develops into the bisexual gametophyte. Water ferns are examples of heterosporous plants. They produce megaspores which develop into the female gametophyte 
and microspores which develop into the male gametophyte. All seedless vascular plants have flagellated sperm that needs water to swim to the egg. Therefore, they are most common in damp habitats. There are about a thousand species of lycophytes and they include the club mosses and the ground pine, even though they're not mosses or pines. Most are tropical and are epiphytes, which means they grow on other trees, but they're not parasitic. Other species grow close to the ground in temperate forests. Sporophylls are the groups of specialized leaves that produce sporangia, which cluster to form cones. The mature club-shaped cones are oil-rich and flammable. They used to be used as early flash bulbs. The spores develop into haploid gametophytes, and they're very tiny. The Pteraphytophyllum includes the Xylophytes, which are whisk ferns because they have Y-like branches. They're very similar to ancient ferns. They lack true leaves and roots. The Svenophytes are horsetails. There's only about 15 different species. They grow in marshes, stream banks, and sandy roadsides. They have an upright stem. Most of that is photosynthetic. They have rhizomes, which are horizontal stems and they have true roots. They also have rings of small leaves and cones at the tip, which are clusters of sporophylls, and they have leaves with sporangia. There's about 12,000 species of ferns. They're the most widespread and diverse pteridophytes. They're most common in the tropics, but also found in temperate areas. Fronds are fern leaves and sori are clusters of sporangia on the undersides of the leaves. This is the life cycle of a fern. You can see that the sporangia undergo meiosis producing spores. The spores germinate and produce the gametophyte, which produces the anthridium and the archegonium. Fertilization occurs, developing into the sporophyte, which grows into the mature fern. The ancestors of seedless vascular plants formed forests during the Carboniferous period about 290 to 360 million years ago. They left fossil fuel in the form of coal. The last two groups of plants are seed plants. Agriculture began when humans cultivated and harvested seed plants probably about 10,000 years ago. The invention of agriculture was the single most important cultural change in the history of humanity. It made possible the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to permanent settlements. Seeds gave plants the ability to survive and reproduce in diverse environments. Seed plants are the base of most food chains on land. There are three important reproductive adaptations of seed plants. First of all, the gametophytes are reduced and the sporophytes dominate. In other words, when you're looking at a plant, you're looking at the sporophyte and you never really see the gametophyte because the small female gametophyte is surrounded by the sporophyte and that protects and nourishes the gametophyte. Seeds are a sporophyte embryo packaged with food supply and a protective coat. Remember, seeds are multicellular and complex, unlike spores. All seed plants are heterospores, which means there's two types of sporangia. The sporangia produce megaspores and microspores. The megaspores produce the female gametophytes and the microspores produce the male gametophytes. The ovule contains the integument, which is a layer of sporophyte tissue, the megasporangium, which produces megaspores, and the megaspore. The female gametophyte develops inside a megaspore and produces eggs. When the egg is fertilized, a sporophyte embryo forms. The whole ovule develops into a seed. Pollen is microspore when the microspores develop into pollen grains. The pollen grains mature to become the male gametophyte. Pollen contributes for the major success of plants on land. Pollination is the transfer of pollen to ovules. The first group of plant seeded plants are gymnosperms, and there's about 720 species. They are considered naked seed plants because they lack ovaries. The most familiar types of gymnosperms are cone bearers. 
The ovules in the seed develop on the surface of specialized seeds called sporophylls. They evolved before angiosperms. There are four phyla of gymnosperms. The first is the ginkgo phyta. There's only one species, the ginkgo biloba. The extract of the ginkgo biloba is sold in health food stores because it supposedly improves memory. Ginkgos are used to line streets and cities because they tolerate pollution well. They also have large fan-like leaves that turn gold in the autumn. These are actually deciduous trees which lose their leaves, unlike most of the other gymnosperms. The female produces a large fleshy seed that's stinky. It has the same organic acid as skunk spray and human body odor. Landscapers who know what they're doing only plant male plants. The cycophyta resemble palms. The cycads use, are used as ornamental plants in homes and gardens. The Australian cycad has cones that are over three feet long and can weigh over 90 pounds. The netophyta has three different genera or genuses. The Welwitschia lives only in deserts of southwest Africa and it has the largest leaves known. The netum are tropical trees or vines and the ephedra are shrubs found in the American deserts. Ephedra was once used to obtain an extract that was used for weight loss and was part of the, the product Thin Fin, which people died from the effects that it had on their heart, so it became illegal. The conifers are the largest phylum of gymnosperms. These are the cone bearers, and there's 550 species. Cones are clusters of scale-like sporophylls. Conifers include pines, firs, spruces, yews, junipers, cedars, and redwoods. Most are evergreens. The needles are adapted to a dry condition. They have a thick cuticle with pits for the stomata, which reduce water loss. A lot of conifers are used to produce lumber and paper pulp. Wood in a tree is the xylem tissue. California redwoods are some of the tallest organisms. They're over 3,000 feet tall. And bristol cone pines, which are also found in California, are some of the oldest organisms. One tree called Methuselah is 4,600 years old. If we look at the life cycle of a pine, you have female cones and male cones. This is the male cone, which is found at the tip of the branches, and female cones are the pine cones that you're familiar with. The male cones undergo meiosis and produce sperm in the form of pollen grain, and the female produce the eggs on the tips of the tabs of the cone. The pollen falls onto the tabs, which catch it, and the eggs get fertilized. They turn into a seed, and the seed is dispersed and grows into a new pine tree. Angiosperms are flowering plants. They, their reproductive structures are the flowers and the fruit. They are the most diverse and widespread plants on the planet. There are 250,000 species, and there's only one phylum, Anthrophyta. In the next podcast, we will go into detail about angiosperms.